content is a powerful database management tool for MySQL. It has visual modules for creating, executing, and optimizing SQL queries, for designing, modeling, and generating databases, and for configuring servers for monitoring users and viewing database tests. MySQL Workbench, which is available for Microsoft Windows, Linux, and Mac OS X, has 32 bit and 64 bit editions. There are two editions. The Community Edition, which is freely available on MySQL Workbench, and the Standard Edition, a commercial version that builds on the Community Edition by having enterprise features such as schema and model validation and the generation of database and test citation data. The Home of Power is the starting point for Workbench Workbench. It contains three main modules. SQL development for working with queries, table data, and scripts, data modeling for designing database models and diagrams, and server administration for monitoring, securing, and configuring your server. To use the SQL development module, create a new connection to a server instance or use an existing one. In Windows, Workbench detects if you've got MySQL on your local machine and creates connections if you have. To create a new connection, click New Connection and enter the server details. The host name and port identify the server instance you want to connect to, and the default schema indicates the database you want to test and open. Useful if you frequently connect to the same database. You can also set per connection options, for example, to enable compression over network connections. While it's possible to save your password with each connection, you might consider it more secure to enter the password each time you connect. You can work with all of your stored connections with the Manage Connections dialog that displays all connections along with their settings. Useful if you connect to several MySQL instances and databases across your network. You can also create new connections from this dialog using the same settings as you have already created. Double click a connection to open the SQL editor window. You will need to enter your password if you have not saved your SQL connection yet. The SQL editor contains a query pin for starting and executing queries, a SQL additions pin for containing SQL statements, an output pin, and an object variable for storing data data. The outer pins can be hidden if you wish. Queries are executed against the default database, chosen by the connection or by double clicking the schema. After selecting a database, you can execute statements against that database. The editor pane highlights the syntax of the statement as you type it. Execute your statement by using query mode, toolbar icons, or if you prefer, focus suite. You can write as many statements as you like in the editor pane, for example, to save as a script. If you have multiple statements in the editor, you can execute all statements together or execute only the statement under the focus suite. The toolbar contains icons to execute the current statement or the whole content of the editor. When you execute multiple queries together, each query should generate the same result. The object browser shows schemas and their structural contents and lets you see the object information for databases, tables, columns, and other objects. If you click a table, it shows summary information for that table. You can expand the list of tables to see additional metadata. By clicking on any of the columns listed, you can see that column's information. The browser also shows other structural information, such as the indexes attached to the table and the names and designations of MySQL fields. One very powerful feature allows you to generate or create statements for objects, such as tables and structural schemas, placing them into an editor so that you can view or modify the object. The editor has other features that are useful for database detection. Many statements are longer than a line or two, and to make statements such as this one easier to work with, you can use the editor to reformat the statement. There is even a plugin to make all keywords in the statement uppercase to go along with the most common SQL conventions. On the right of the editor, you can view the SQL additions pane. You can add snippets of code to this pane by clicking on the toolbar icon. You can view these snippets, edit them, and execute them at your own stage. As well as your own snippet, the SQL additions pane contains many useful fragments of SQL syntax for database management, various shows such as in the DBL category, various create 
also the jump statement. And in the DNA category, statements for querying are numbered by your program. Each snippet contains detailed syntax for each statement, including the various optional values. As with your own snippet, you can insert a third page fragment into the editor at any time. The output pane records statements that you have executed, along with information on rows with length and duration. You can copy statements from the output pane to the editor to edit or re-execute them. If you have saved your own snippets to the Drupal editing pane, you can re-execute them where you wish. MyPR Workbench lets you edit data in various ways. Obviously, you can execute import or update statements in the editor, but you can also edit data directly in the results or certain query pane. In this case, the results pane shows the result of a query that aggregates data, so the results is marked read-only. If instead you issue a query that doesn't aggregate and also includes a unique identifier such as a primary key in its calendar, the results table for that query is editable. To edit any value, double-click on it, and you can edit it in place. Once you have completed your edit, click Try. Workbench displays the update statement that performs the edit in dialog, which you can then apply to the underlying code. You can also modify data in a similar way by right-clicking a table in the Edit Browser and then selecting Edit Table Data. The data modeling module lets you work with enhanced entity relationship models. You can create a model of an existing database by reverse engineering it. To do that, connect to the server by specifying a stored connection in the user array and choose the database you want to reverse engineer. The wizard retrieves all object information for that database and lets you choose which objects you want to reverse engineer. You can also choose to place all the imported objects in a diagram to begin with. To start with, put the object that's matched together in the middle of the diagram, but we'll come back to that in a moment. The model contains a new schema for the reverse engineered database, along with an entry schema for your distribution. Each model has an editor diagram, which you can manage as you wish. As you see, the objects in the model are shown in the diagram, but we want to arrange them so they are dynamic matrix images and not only labels. If the schema diagram has more tables and views than are understood comfortably in this schema, you can use the bird's eye view to drag the viewport around the diagram, or you can zoom in and out to view the diagram at whatever level of detail you'd like. The objects in the diagram, such as this picture model, can be modified in various ways. For example, you can change the color of these objects, either to make it stand out in the diagram, or perhaps to group related objects together. You can also edit the table's metadata directly from the diagram. In this case, I'm changing the size of the last name I select to fit with the last digit of the model. Back in the model, you can see that the metadata of the active table has changed. Because this model was reverse engineered from an existing database, you can synchronize with that database to make any changes you've made to the model apply to the underlying database. As before, choose the connection to use and enter the point data as required. The wizard connects and retrieves the point state of the database and compares it to the model. Here, it shows that the actual table has changed and displays the statement needed to make that change. Executing that statement brings the database in sync with the model. Another useful feature of this module is the ability to share it on any database. You can imagine creating a model in this tool and using it to create the underlying database without having to write all of the create table statements yourself. To simulate this, we can change the name of the schema if no one models the database that doesn't exist on the server. To forward engineer the model, connect to the server as before. Validating the model ensures that Workbench knows what statements to execute. In this case, it needs to create the particular new database. You also have the option to fine-tune the new database in a number of ways, and to choose which objects to execute. You can save the script to a file, copy it to your clipboard, or execute it straight from the wizard. 
that you've completed the rigors and now have a new database that contains all the objects and relationships in your model. To see the new database, go back into the SQL editor, display the object I've returned, and refresh it to get the latest metadata from the server. The forward engineered database appears. For a database with many tables, you might want to create a special diagram to keep things showing only a subset of objects in your database. In the Tequila database, for example, customer address information is stored in the address table linked to the customer table. Addresses are then linked to cities in the city table and onwards to country in the country table. Having created the diagram, you can rename it to reflect the context. Once you've created the model, you can save it as an MWD file, which you can share with others. Saving that MWD file also makes it appear in the PIM tab as a shared model. Because reverse engineering a database is so common, there's a shortcut to do it straight from the home screen. Here, I'm reverse engineering the World MADB database using the same technique. Tequila database comes with a sample EEI model that you can load into Workbench. The sample model demonstrates many features, including the ability to lay out the diagram with layers and colors, making the model interactive. The third module is for server administration. It contains features for monitoring and configuring your server. The server status screen is set for various system and non-square metrics, along with a list of connections and their status. You can start and stop the metrics added in the workbench, and you can view the status and system variables of the running server, whether all together in a single list or categorized for function information. You can view server log files, including error logs, binary logs, and the inner DB logs if configured from within this window. Startup options are shown in an open tab window. The options that are currently applied to the server are in request and values, and you can change those options within this window. They are categorized per function, and any changes you make are saved to the configuration file specified, where they will be read in a common manner. You can configure users, their roles within the server, and other privileges. Finally, you can export and import data directly from within Workbench. Specify the folder path and export each table to a separate file in that location. Alternatively, you can export to a single file. Choose the database you want to export and optionally choose individual tables. The export process requires a password and displays a star. As you can see, each table is exported into its own file. The import process reads the folder path and displays database objects and tables in that directory. So there you have it. That's Workbench in with its three modules, which is relevant to building models and training your database.